2008, I generated almost a billion dollars in sales for this one one big company in Orlando, Florida, over about eight years. And then 2008 comes around and boom, boom. I mean, I had to lay off 2,000 telemarketers. I got laid off. Uh, it was my best sales year ever. I sold my house, my cars. My oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> my cars, my boat, my furniture. I mean, it was like, holy smokes. And for the next year and a half, I figured, you know, I'm going to be able to bounce. I'm going to, I'm going to, at that time, I was still, you know, I also owned businesses of my own and I was a, an employee. And I thought, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, keep this lifestyle and move on. But my businesses were failing as well. So everything was just, you know, crashing and burning, my, uh, all tied too much to the same industry. And well, before you know it, you know, it was really reinvent myself again and start all over. Hello and welcome to the Disrupt the Everyday podcast. We're here to help you navigate life while disrupting the status quo. Our discussions cover a number of topics relevant to everyday life. We discuss everything from relationships to entrepreneurship. We also engage in some difficult but important conversations. And now, here are your hosts, Brian and Tanya Hamilton. Welcome to the Disrupt the Everyday podcast. Today we're joined by another disruptor, uh, our guest today is Marco Torres. Marco, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure, Brian Tanya. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming on. Now, let's start things off by learning a little bit more about you, Marco. Who is Marco Torres? All right. Well, thanks again for having me. I am a, uh, well, I guess I could say I'm kind of a serial entrepreneur. I've been in business for myself over and over throughout my life. I've reinvented my career many times over. Um, uh, you can see if you're happy to be watching the video, I'm no spring chicken. So I've been around for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a, I've been an internet marketer since before, you know, since very early adapter of it, since about 1995, I got involved in internet marketing, a lot of email marketing, building websites early on. So before Google, Facebook, uh, YouTube, etc. And, um, uh, like I started as an entrepreneur at age nine. By the time I was 12, I was featured on the front page of the newspaper for the biggest paper route they'd ever seen. Uh, by the age 23, I owned five restaurants and a nightclub. So hopefully I can bring some sprinkles of value to your, uh, to your listeners here on how to grow a business, how to grow a side hustle, how to, how to take, actually how to take a side hustle and turn it into a full-time deal. That's one of the things i I've done, you know, over and over. I've had jobs. And when I, you know, as after I sold my businesses, moved to Florida, I got into this into sales because that's where the, mo the money was. But I often had to, you know, when early on starting different businesses, it was like, okay, I have a job, pay the bills, and then be willing to work the burn the candle at both ends to build a business, you know, in the off hours. Uh, currently, I focus on a business I call marketingboost.com. And what we do with marketingboost.com is we, we, um, we, well, we'll get more into that along the show here, but, but we are a tool, a subscription model tool that provides entrepreneurs the ability to stand out from the crowd, to be able to uh, uh, offer incentives versus discounting and help grow your business by adding additional ad, you know, value add bonuses to your offers to create additional sales, referrals, testimonials. All sorts of ways you can use these incentives, and we'll get into that along the way, I imagine. Oh, yes. Yeah, for sure. Now, you really uh, kind of struck me there. What was it that really started that entrepreneurial bug for you? Because you you said you started your first business at nine with that paper route and end up on the front page of the paper <laughs> three years later with the largest paper route. Was this something that was, uh, you know, was this a family thing? Were your parents entrepreneurs? My my parents were, my mother was an entrepreneur. Uh, she had always been, you know, uh, you know, realtor or something or other uh my father had the the he worked in the big corporate world but he had the uh, uh i guess the spirit of adventure because uh, he picked up the whole family and we moved from texas to puerto rico he was transferred to san juan puerto rico being the only being that he was bilingual and in the in the corporate world in texas with general electric credit so they transferred him to tech to puerto rico he said okay let's go picked up the whole family and um, which was very, you know, unusual for like his background. The whole family had all lived in San Antonio, Texas. Nobody had ever left. We, you know, they're all still there, you know, 50 years later. And so uh, we moved to Puerto Rico. I had the blessings of growing up in the islands and surfing. And, and uh, from there, you know, 
Uh, why I got it started at nine as an entrepreneur, I don't know. But I enjoyed it. And one of the things I learned from very early on, and there's a lesson for listeners as well, is leveraging relationships and leveraging pulling in talent with, you know, what, what I did to build a route that big, just for example. And I didn't even remember this until the other day I was going through. My dad's long gone, unfortunately. But I was going through some old files of his, cleaning up the garage, you know, my mom, their, their house, the garage. And I found a file with my name on it. I open it up and there's a, you know, the paper clipping that he saved of me, uh, you know, from the, from the San Juan star. And, uh, but what I did back then was I, I recruited friends of mine, you know, it was like, I was good. I realized I was good at and not afraid of knocking on doors and selling the subscriptions. And then back then we had to go back to collect it too, because there was no internet to make your, you know, pay your bills and stuff. So you had to go back and, you know, weekly and collect all the money, you know, the money they owed you for the papers and plus the delivery. So I focused on sales and collections and I had my buddies help me get up at five in the morning to go deliver the route. So they were all delivering routes and I was mostly doing the sales and collections. And uh, we built a, a pretty huge business that I eventually actually sold. So an exit plan is also a good thing too. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's been fun. And then of course I have gotten, you know, back into, the, I was in the corporate world for many years, uh, after I sold the, the restaurants that we had, I, I went and worked for big, uh, in the restaurant industry for many years and then moved to Florida, got into sales and, uh, ended up with a big company in the travel space. I've been in the travel space and you'll see how that relates to what we do today in a moment, but I got into the travel space and, uh, uh, that went incredibly well, actually, until 2008. I generated almost a billion dollars in sales for this one one big company in Orlando, Florida, over about eight years. And then 2008 comes around, and boom, boom. I mean, I had to lay off 2,000 telemarketers. I got laid off. Uh, it was my best sales year ever. I sold my house, my cars. My oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> my cars, my boat, my furniture. I mean, it was like, holy smokes. And for the next year and a half, I figured, you know, I'm going to be able to bounce. I'm going to, I'm going to, at that time, I was still, you know, I also owned businesses of my own and I was a, an employee. And I thought, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, keep this lifestyle and move on. But my businesses were failing as well. So everything was just, you know, crashing and burning, uh, all tied too much to the same industry. And well, before you know it, you know, it was really reinvent myself again and start all over. And uh, I can keep going with that story. I'll, it's really in a way how marketing boost came about. So you mind if I just keep on? Yeah, yeah of course. course. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we uh, I got together with some business partners that are some friends of mine that I had done business with while in that corporate world. And again, another example of leveraging relationships because um, I got together with a, with um, one of my top vendors who, would, who was helping me provide leads for all those call centers and stuff. And he too was in a bind you know, after 2008. So we... Uh, we uh, we joined together. We we got together. We formed a you know we started another travel business of our own in about 2010, and uh, that took off. And for you know a few years, we really started reinventing ourselves there. And uh, what happened was we wanted more. We needed video testimonials from our clients so that we could really expand that business. And we were scratching our head: How could we generate video testimonials? from our clients when they're at our hotels and resorts around the world. And we were like, what would motivate people to actually, you know, do a selfie video and brag about the hotel brand and about ours. So we came up with an idea to do, uh, here's a lesson for every listener out there. And that is, we came up with a, an idea to do a survey when the client would be at the peak of their happiness. And all of us need reviews and testimonials. Out of whatever business you're in, if you don't have constant reviews and testimonials coming in, you're behind the eight ball because your competitors probably do. And people are going to look at reviews to, you know, consider doing a business with you. So reviews are important and you need them fresh constantly. You know, you're, if your last review was three years ago, that doesn't do much for you. So uh, and the other problem is if you don't ask for reviews, the only ones you're going to get are the negative ones. Uh, yeah, because you know people are are natural. I mean, we expect to be happy when we buy somebody's product or service. So when we are, yeah, that's what I expected, and we're not going out of our way to write a review. 
But if you're not happy about something, boy, you want to tell the world and you want to go <laughs> post it on multiple websites if possible and, you know, so on. So we, so you need to be soliciting reviews from, from people that are likely to be happy with your service. So the survey is the key. So we do a survey when we expected them to be happy the day after check-in, for example. We send them an email and a text message and say, hey, how is our ho the hotel living up to your expectations? We see now by now you should have checked in. Uh, is it, uh, how was our service so far? How's the hotel? Would you give us a rating from one to five? And if they gave us a four or five with automation, we would immediately be sending them another text and email saying, fantastic. We're thrilled that you're having a good time and enjoying the resort. Would you do us a huge favor and help us spread the word about this resort? And, and, uh, Maybe fill, would, and film, if you would go out of your way to film a selfie testimonial from the pool, the beach, the bar, the restaurant, whatever is your favorite part of the hotel, brag about the hotel brand and about our brand, we will reward you with a complimentary hotel stay in your choice of Orlando or Las Vegas, three nights in your choice of Orlando or Vegas. And that took off. Before you knew it, we had dozens of these video testimonials. <laughs> the and then it was hundreds. And, and we were leveraging those videos all over our website, turning those into, you know, into thousands of additional sales. And it was powerful. But then, you know, as these people started to raise their hand and say, hey, OK, we want that free trip you promised us. Now we had to pay for them, right? We had to yeah. dig, dig into our pockets to pay for those free trips we were giving away. And it was getting expensive. And we're like, well, the, fortunately, we were we were benefiting from it enough, but it was good. But still, it was like, well, this is costing money. How can we reduce that? So uh, we went back to these hotel partners since we were doing a lot of volume. And we said, look, we know you have a problem and uh, we can fix it. And the problem is, of course, your hotel gets, you know, you fill up on certain weekends, you fill up on holidays, Christmas, New Year's, Thanksgiving, 4th of July. But 70% of the year, 30% of your rooms at least are empty. And once that clock clicks midnight, if you don't have anybody in the room, that's revenue you're never going to see again. Mm -hmm. So we have a solution. We can put warm bodies in those rooms, couples, families, individuals that will spend money at the bar, the restaurant, the casino. The, uh, the gift shop, the attraction desk, and so on and so forth. And and uh, a few of them, we, we managed to get a couple to agree to, okay, let's give it a test and generate some revenue versus no revenue. They're going to get upgraded room types. They're going to book additional nights. And so the we had a few, a few of them to join us in Orlando and Vegas. So we could now fulfill our own complimentary hotel stays that we were giving away and and people, uh, you know, so that was phenomenal. Then we thought to ourselves, can you imagine if we had hundreds of hotels participating and destinations all over the world, we'd have a standalone business. And so that's what we set out to do. And we, that eventually turned into what is Marketing Boost today, where we now offer complimentary hotel stays in over 125 destinations around the world really some sexy destinations like of course orlando and vegas and then there's san diego branson there's um uh lake tahoe there's manhattan there's myrtle beach there's daytona beach miami beach 30 destinations in the u.s there's places like five nights in hawaii five nights in cancun mexico puerto vallarta four nights in cabo san lucas punta cana Seven night stays in places like Phuket, Thailand, or Bali. We have destinations all over Europe and Asia and Australia. And so it's now a worldwide business with just that. And so we offer three categories of incentives. One's the complimentary hotel stays. And there's a there's no timeshare presentations. When we decided to say. do this. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a catch? <laughs> yeah, right. It's the first thing that comes to mind, right? Uh, Brian, uh, Brian, please pronounce your name one more time. I, I, yeah, for sure. It's Brian, like the like the number nine. Okay, good, good. Yeah. Brian, Brian. So, um, uh, yeah, that's one of the first questions Brian everybody asks, right? Is uh, what's the catch? Sounds too good to be true. <laughs> and and so we decided if we were going to do this, we were going to do it differently than anybody else, and and reinvent. And we really revolutionized the travel certificate industry. We're not the first to do it. There's other companies have been around doing this for decades, but we, our competitors, many of them, most of them, really make them almost impossible to use. Um, they're designed to be forgotten about, essentially. They, they, they want you to uh, give them 60 days minimum or 60 to 90 days minimum notice prior to travel. 
uh, our competitors want, uh, for example, they'll they'll make you choose two. Please give us two of your favorite travel dates. Make them 90 days apart, and then we'll get back to you on which one you might be able to use. And they really make it, you know, difficult. And so what we we did, we're the first and only to have a platform that is uh, no phone calls to make. It's an online self-service platform. So after the certificate is activated, the client logs into an online uh, uh, portal and plugs in the dates they're interested in traveling, sees what hotels are available based on, of course, on availability. And then they get to see the hotels, click it, book it, and get instant confirmation and gratification. So um, uh, that part has been phenomenal. Uh, no timeshare presentations or anything like that. And so that's the one category is the complimentary hotel stays. Uh, then we have hotel savings cards. And these are come in increments of $100, $200, 300 and $500. These are like, uh, like a gift card, but they don't pay for the entire hotel stay. They'll cover or um, they'll, they'll discount the room rate compared to the Expedia's of the world from, from 10% to 50% off approximately. And then there's the restaurant savings vouchers. So those are the three categories of incentives that we offer for a subscription fee of only $37 a month. So the, the key now is, okay, you have incentives and what can you do with them? And that's what we'll cover even more. But that's what's become my passion right now is, is marketingboost.com. We still have other travel sites where we do a very high volume uh, travel company. And, uh, but this is my fun. This is my my baby since 2017 that we launched this business, and uh, I get a thrill every day of you know being able to help entrepreneurs uh, thrive versus just survive. Uh, right now, we've never seen the successes for many of our clients because you know COVID is is, is it. For the last couple of years, we had we still had our core base. We lost we lost a number of members who thought in their mind they thought well, who's going to want a travel incentive. But they were they, those who stuck with us continued to use them and found that people people knew it's going to be over sooner or later. So they would they were still interested in these complimentary hotel stay trips and what have you. They were still activating the certificate. True, many of them weren't traveling, but as soon as it started, you know, everybody was getting vaccine. Middle of last year, it started booming again. Everybody was using those. those their, their, their. By the way, I forgot to mention when you activate one of these certificates. They, you have 18 months to select travel dates. During COVID, we made it 24 months. So people had plenty of time to, you know, eventually use the certificate. And uh, so now it's, we're, they're all booming back. I mean, I call it revenge travel. Everybody, <laughs> you know, we're all sick and tired of being locked down. We all want to go somewhere and, and, and we are. So book travel is back and it's booming. So there's never been a better time to be using our incentives to add value to whatever your call to action is. Mm -hmm. So Marco, you talked, like, obviously you shared how the value added incentives work for your industry. Uh, now for everybody else out there who has a business and stuff, like, I know a lot of people often think discounting an item or a price and like how that can be beneficial, but how can we use that value added incentive for all the other businesses out there? Yeah. Thank you for asking. Great question. So so we have found there's there's really a myriad of ways and to, to to do that and, and we do teach that within our organization we have a, a facebook group for example with um, over twenty eight thousand entrepreneurs in the group and we help each other peer-to-peer -peer, you know promote ideas we, uh, a lot of our members will post a, a a campaign they're getting ready to run and run it by the the members first. Hey, what do you think of this? Critique this for me before I go live. And so we're 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 helping each other like that to to um, to get ideas from each other. And 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 we're always doing webinars and teaching people on what to do. But let's talk about a few of them. So um, adding value, ver you know, versus discounting. So discounting is tempting to do because people are like, you know, you, you your competitors are priced at one point. You figure, well, maybe I'll generate more business if I'm cheaper than they are. And it becomes a race to the bottom and you're giving away all, you know, you sometimes don't even realize as little as a 10% discount can sometimes mean you, you might end up having to double your sales to end up in the same spot you were the day before with, with, as far as net profits concerned. Right. And so, uh, you got to be careful with discounting. And so how would you avoid that? Well, let's suppose, for example, you are a business coach, you know, you're uh, uh, or a, a, a physical fitness trainer or what have you. And you're, you know, you're trying to get people to book you and contract with you for six months or a year. And, and you know, rather than just drop off after three, you know, 30 days. 
And so you might dangle a carrot of one of our incentives with a building a loyalty program. So you might say, uh, folks, here's the deal. Uh, I, you can hire me month to month and no long-term contract. But if you, uh, if you stick with me for 90 days, so that I can help you get your physical fitness. You follow my system and you, you know, we're going to, I'm going to hold you accountable or we're going to work together for this, that, and the other. But if you stick with it for 90 days on your anniversary of 90 days, I'm going to reward you with three, four day, three night hotel stay in your choice of Orlando or Vegas, for example. So you can show off that new body with 30 pounds, you know, 20 pounds, you know, lighter and, uh, or so on. Yeah. Maybe you're a gym. You might say, you know, if you sign up for the six months program or, or, you know, we'll give you your choice of, uh, three nights in, in Miami beach or Daytona beach or whatever. And, uh, but if you stick for 12 months on the anniversary of the 12 month, we will reward you with six days and five nights in your choice of Hawaii or Cancun or Puerto or, or, or Cabo San Lucas or Cancun. And, you know, you're dangling that carrot and you're turning it into a loyalty program for them to stick around for the 12 months, for, for example. Or if they pay in advance, even better, can you know offer them the opportunity to, if you pay the 12 months in advance, we'll give you that six day, five night trip to Cancun immediately as your reward, as a bonus for taking advantage. And you're turning that into a cash flow. I had a guy generate almost $500,000 because he had a subscription model, people paying him 97 a month for his tips on when to buy and sell stocks and trade stocks and, and cryptocurrencies and what have you. And he had built a huge following on Telegram, a different social media network. And they were paying him 97 a month for that uh, his, his services. He found marketing moves and he came up with a campaign to say, if you pay us six months in advance, become our whatever he called it, our gold membership platform, we will reward you with a bonus month and a uh, your choice of Orlando, I mean, uh, you know, Vegas or San Diego, three nights in Vegas or San Diego. If you pay for 12 months in advance, we'll give you the 13th month free. And that's an example of adding your own value, creating units of your own that you can do possibly to add value to your offer that, that, um, that maybe not cost you hard dollars out of your pocket, but you're adding additional value versus discounting. So he, instead of saying, you know, get 12 months and pay me, you know, 20% uh, off of that, he'd throw in the 13th month free. So for, as an example, so he said, get the 13th month free, plus I'm going to give you your choice of five nights in Hawaii or five nights in Cancun. Well, he had about 300 of them step up and pay for the year in advance at over a thousand dollars. He had another 150 step up and pay for the uh, six month plan. And in total, over about five days, he generated nearly $500,000 in additional immediate cash flow by adding the travel incentives as a bonus. Um, other examples I can uh, uh, go with is just, you know, adding them to, well, here's a simple thing that any business owner can do. Right nowadays, we're all using Zoom like crazy, right? We're we have the power of technology today where we can meet with people online versus having to drive all over town to make you know presentations. So that part of the technology makes our time much more efficient and people are used to it and okay with it. So we don't have to go meet them in person necessarily. Mm -hmm. But now, so people book appointments and then how many of them don't show up? A lot. For, all, for many of us, we have a huge no-show problem with the appointment setting. So we recommend, for example, using what we call micro-incentives for a, mic, for a micro call to action, such as booking a uh, free 20 minute, no, you know, no obligation consultation. So you might use a hotel savings card for that. So you might say, hey, when you book an appointment, we're gonna reward you with a hundred dollar hotel savings card, good at over a million hotels worldwide to save you on your next hotel booking. All we ask is that you show up on time for the appointment. We know your time is valuable. We think ours is as well. So if you show up on time, we'll reward you with a $100 hotel savings card. Now, when you get them on that phone, uh, on that Zoom call, you make your presentation, whatever it is. And at the end of that presentation, you might now pull out the bigger call to action. And the and the bigger call to action you know, might be the uh, trip to Cancun. And you might say, okay, here's the deal. If you do hire me as your business coach, you know, I'm not the I'm not cheap, but I'm the best. And here's what we do. We do this. We do that. We do the other. This is going to be, a, you know, an investment of 
$6,000 and what have you. Uh, if you do pay it in full today, here's what I can do for you. I can throw in, a, I've got an incredible relationship with a travel partner, redeemvacations.com. And um, by the way, that's the name of the company that fulfills the trips. Your clients will never hear about Marketing Boost. That is your little secret. I call that it's the, 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 the secret of many a mastermind marketer because we're not out there marketing to directly to consumers, really. It's to, to be to be. So the business owner can give the trip away and say, I've got a relationship with my travel partner, redeemvacations.com, and I've got a few of these trips I'm doing for this promotion this week. So if you hire us and pay in full, um, I'm going to reward you with a six-day, five-night trip to Cancun on me. Now, here's the disclosures. No airfare is not included. Food and beverage is not included. And of course, the, the government taxes are, are going to be on you as well. So there are some government taxes to pay. And by the way, that's what we call an activation fee that covers the government. The government's always going to get paid. When somebody checks into those rooms, the government expects to get paid their tourism fee, you know, and hotel taxes. So uh, the options here are the client. Most of our clients let the end user, let the client they gave the certificate to pay the, the, uh, the activation fee, which covers those government taxes. Uh, or they can pay it. So if you made enough money on you know, your transaction, you have the option to what we do call fund your wallet inside a marketing boost, and you can pay those activation fees for your client and truly give them a complimentary stay. Or you can give them the, the certificate, do a disclaimer saying, hey, the airfare is not included, food and beverage, and of course, government taxes and fees are not covered. So the client receives it, and it's up to them if they actually want to activate the certificate, and then they'll have 18 months to use it. So that's a couple of examples of, uh, you know, using it. For example, uh, webinars is another key team where a lot of us are doing webinars. You can use the, I've got podcasters even that use um, the um, these incentives to, to promote, especially if they're going with live podcasts. They might be saying, um, join the live podcast and we're, and stay tuned to the end. We're going to be giving away two trips to, you know, Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. So you're going to want to be on the call and you're going to want to participate and be engaged whenever we ask questions and what have you, because we're going to select winners of these two trips at the end of the webinar, depending upon who is the most engaged. So raise your hand, say hello, where are you from? You know, and get people and, and help get your audience engaged, listening to you and promoting. I've seen people grow. I've had these people use these to grow their social media networks. I have a guy who went from zero to 10,000 members. This has been done over and over and over, actually. Zero to 10,000 followers in his Facebook group in less than 90 days by running contests in his Facebook group weekly, where every everybody who joined the group, he'd be messaging them saying, hey, you invite 20, for every 20 friends of yours that you invite to join this group, you get a chance to win this week's trip contest that I'm giving away three nights in, you know, Tahoe, three nights in, in Branson. We're giving them every week a different destination. And he had it virally, the group was growing because he'd motivating everybody to share the news and to share the message about that group. And then of course, once you build a big Facebook group, if you're a smart entrepreneur, you have the ability to present yourself as an authority, as the authority of your, your product or service, you know, deliver, content of value, teaching about what you do, promoting the next webinar or live Zoom calls or whatever it is you, you know, to to turn to to develop those prospects in your Facebook group, nurture them, show that you're the expert, the authority, and eventually they're going to buy your product or service and you're going to monetize that group. So those are a couple of ideas and I don't want to hog the entire microphone here, but yeah, that's the uh, that's the idea, Brian. We can and, and 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 we can, you know, you can do that kind of thing and keep growing. So why do you think it is that value adding is, you know, it, it, it beats out discounting because, you know, people, n number one, like if I'm on Amazon, a lot of times I'm just looking for the cheapest price on a product, but, but again, you know, and you've used your techniques and like, you've learned all this from being a part of different businesses, leading different businesses. Why, why is the value add so much more enticing than a discount? Well, it's kind of like this. I don't know. I'm here in Florida. And um, uh, I don't know what the grocery stores are like where, wherever you might be or all the listeners are, but where I'm at, I walk into the grocery stores like Publix, and the first thing I see as you walk in is these big, big barrels or baskets and what have you of buy one, get one free offers. 
And um, so they have found, for example, and, and studies have proven and psychological studies have proven that that people respond better to additional value versus just a, you know, a five, 10, 15 percent off. Obviously, depending upon what you're you know, buying, like you said, at Amazon, you know, you're tempted to go with the cheapest. But then you're also checking the reviews. You're doubtful yeah. if, it's, <laughs> if it's the cheapest. Why? You know, what's there's part of you begins to go, why is it the cheapest? You know, and so even that alone starts to to question the credibility of the of the offer, the fact that they might be, especially if they're dramatically cheaper. Then it's like, hmm, why? So, yeah. so then the added value, for example, you know, with the you walk into the grocery stores, they got the buy one get one stuff all over the place, and you realize if you and I study this because I'm, you know, by the way, this is another tip I give to people out there: is study, study marketing. Don't be annoyed by the marketing uh, uh, stuff that keeps coming your way. Don't be annoyed by the quote unquote spam emails. Study them. Don't be annoyed by, you know, uh, pop up, whatever. As you, because if you're a marketer, you want to learn from others. As a matter of fact, you want to learn from other industries, not just your own niche. Don't just look at what your competitors are doing. Look at all kinds of stuff. And whatever it is that grabbed, grabbed your eye, when you decided to, you know, on a Facebook scroll and you saw an ad that caught your eye and you actually maybe clicked and you bought, man, screenshot stuff, study it. What was it about the copy that grabbed my attention? What was it about the, the flow of their sales funnel that that that, that moved me to, to the, the hypnotic writing that kept me reading from one paragraph to the next one to the next one where I actually took action and I spent my money? And sometimes I recommend buy stuff you don't even need just for the purpose of studying their flow, because you're going to be able to learn things that you can then emulate, model. I, today, I think there's never been an easier time to be an entrepreneur because so much of so much has already been has been done that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You know, you can pack almost copy paste, but you know, you're going to obviously a better word for it is modeling. But you can you can there's a whole industry called uh, you know funnel hacking. Where you can, you know, essentially, you're going to learn from a competitor. You're going to buy their product or service. You're going to, you're going to dissect their sales process, including all the text message and emails they sent you if you didn't buy, and and so forth. To dissect the process so that you can take some, you know, pieces of it and turn it and 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 add those to your process possibly, or test a new campaign and a new sales funnel and a new ad campaign and what have you from ideas from maybe even an entirely different industry. But going back to the, the, the discount, you walk into these grocery stores and the day before you might've noticed that can of beans was two ninety five. Now they got them in the bucket up front for buy one, get one for five eighty five or for $6, you know, buy one, get one. Is it buy? So you buy one can for one can of mayonnaise for five ninety five, And they say, buy one, get one. But the, a couple of days ago, you could have bought that bottle of mayonnaise for two ninety seven. So it was like they really doubled the price, practically. <laughs> and and but the impulse buy, you, you you don't do the math. You the impulse buy is there, and you're like, hmm, two for one. I I wasn't th I didn't come in here looking for mayonnaise, but I always could use some more mayonnaise. So <laughs> now you dump you dump two jars of mayonnaise into your and you end up buying double what you you didn't even need it in the first place. Now you're buying two bottles, so they got you spending you know six dollars on something you weren't even or or you weren't even thinking of buying in the first place. So they got you to take a uh, an impulse buy, and they doubled the revenue because they got you to buy two for one. Mm -hmm. So the again, that's what I mean by adding value. Now maybe it's a it's a it's a it's a, uh, a buy one get one if you can afford to depending upon your product or service. Maybe it's a, uh, you know add an additional month, add an additional some additional widgets, products or or stuff you may have sitting on the shelf that hasn't moved for a while. You might as well get it out of inventory and buy product A. You get product B to go with it, and so that so when you're comparing that price discount on Amazon, if you saw well with this guy, I get product B to go with it. I don't even need product B, but what is product B? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> might as well take it. <laughs> I might as well take it. It's about the same price, or it's only a little bit more, but I get product B to go with it, and it says it's a good add-on to product A, and I don't know what, okay, what the heck, boom. And you, so they got you to take that impulse buy and, and or, or, you know, and so forth. And uh, so, again, adding value is, is, 
proven really in many, many ways. And as you walk through these grocery stores, you know, they'll they'll have, you know, red tags, you know, buy one, get one or what have you. And and often that's much more effective than than a, uh, a tag that just says 10 percent off. You know, and you and they ended up getting you to double your your purchase because now you spent, you know, Walgreens does this all over the place. You know, a lot of these different retailers are doing that kind of thing because they get you to one double your 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 set your purchase and and they they maybe they discounted a little bit but they got you to spend double the amount of money and they moved double the about the product you know they moved stuff off the shelves that might be getting a little uh older or what have you so um uh just ex a couple of examples there you know sales funnels are the key automation is the key as well you know one of the things at marketing boost we do have a program called marketing boost solutions where we offer upgrades of a complete CRM platform, the funnel builder, the the uh, email, text messaging, voicemail broadcasting. So we do have the tools in addition to the incentives to help business owners really help them build and design their sales funnel, help you know include the marketing boost incentives so that you can get people to uh, you know to book those appointments with a with a call to action that includes a, an incentive that goes out automatically. Or in, you know buy you know purchase this product today, and um, a lot of them simply do that, adding the value of marketing boost incentive. So as you go through the sales funnel, I got people that sell courses, for example, and they'll sell the course, and of course they'll go when you, when you buy this course today, you get bonus product, you know, and they'll throw in additional additional value add stuff of their own. You're gonna when you buy this course for five hundred ninety seven dollars, you get course B to go with it free, and you get this, and you get that bonus, and you get this ebook, and you get this you know PDF plus. Take action today and get a four day three night in your choice of Orlando or Las Vegas on us. You know, and it's the higher the ticket, the higher the the sales you know the ticket uh, uh, value, the more these complimentary hotel stays actually make sense. You know, you to when you're selling a fifty dollar product, you don't want to throw in a free night trip to Cancun. It's just be like, what? It sounds too good to be true. It's crazy, and and therefore it likely won't work. So that's when you want to maybe turn them into a you know you get a chance to win. If you're let's say you're an e -re a retailer, you might be creating a point system, a loyalty program. So people come to your website, they typically spend you know a hundred dollars, and you were wishing they'd spend two hundred. So, and they might buy once and not come back. So now you you create a loyalty program with a marketing boost incentive. And you might say, we're running a promo this month when you get 500 points. For every dollar you spend, you get a point. With 500 points, uh, or for simply saying, you know, with, with, with every $500 purchase, you're getting a, um, a complimentary hotel stay in your choice of, uh, or when you get to five, because you can only give them once to, every, to somebody every 12 months. One of the rules with these complimentary trips, for example, is the hotels don't want to be a part of a free trip travel club. So they don't want people, the same people coming over and over. Yeah. So they do have a rule of once every 12 months. So, um, uh, so for example, you might make that a point system. You know, when, when you spend a thousand dollars with our company, you know, you will, will reward you with a complimentary hotel stay at five nights in your choice of Cancun or Cabo San Lucas. And so, um, uh, now you've got to, and now they, when they bought that first product for a hundred dollars, now you've got a reason to email them and text message them and saying, you've got 900 points to go and you could be on your way to Cancun, Mexico and so forth. And then, you know, the ad campaign might show pictures of Cancun and the, you know, video about it. And, you know, come back today. This is on, we have this product on sale and this product on sale. And, you know, you're enticing them to come back and earn more rewards with a reward program to get to that thousand dollars in sales so you can reward them with a bonus trip. And mm -hmm. so rather than, you know, now, now you've got a reason to, to keep going back and look different than your competitors because you've got this high value perceived value incentive, which your competitors don't. And, um, and you're, and you're creating excitement. There's a reason to come back to your website, including stuff like, you know, every, uh, for every purchase, you get a chance to win. But when you buy a thousand dollars worth of program, a product or more, you definitely win. So for, you know, something along those lines, and that way you're getting reasons for people to, you know, do come back and take whatever actions you want them to take.
Mm -hmm. So I like the idea of the loyalty programs. You do see that a lot, even in big businesses and stuff like that, right? That, you know, I have apps on my phone and it's like, you have this many points now after purchasing and spending this many dollars. So I do like that idea. And uh, the subscriptions, those are really big right now. And you see that a lot too, right? So it's like every month you're getting a, you know, a box sent to your home and all that kind of stuff. It could be a mystery box, what have you. So that's really neat too, because there's that like, surprise feeling right now for businesses and i mean there's so many out there uh, you know different entrepreneurs how what are your suggestions for standing out in a crowd yeah well you've got to uh you've you've got to find ways to do that right because you it is a everything is a competitive market As a matter of fact if you don't have a lot of competitors in in your area you're probably in too small a niche <laughs> yeah, okay. I've had people come up with you, tell me, oh, yeah, I have this great idea, but if, if nobody else is doing it, you know what? It's likely not a good idea. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you you might have the one idea that nobody's thought of that you could go out and and, and re, you know reinvent the the world, but doubtful. It's not. <laughs> if you don't have a lot of competitors, you likely need to you know drop that idea. Uh, so. Uh, standing out from the crowd can be difficult, and and there is where you know the the simplest solution I have really is is the the marketing boost incentives. You know, for example, the way we did it with one of our travel sites uh, offering uh, bonus trips. You know, they buy one get one, offering the the to give us the video testimonial, and we'd reward you. And we have over thirty thousand video testimonials on one of our travel websites based on using this exact format of, of uh, doing that survey I told you about at the beginning. And that those 30,000 testimonials have helped us leverage that site into over a million travelers over the last 10 years, you know, and, and, and millions and millions of dollars in sales. So, um, so that's just some examples there. And the key is with those, uh, everything I've been talking about, you know, where where can you run and it's not always just add the incentive to the call to action it's a matter of creating excitement and you know enthusiasm and 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 getting people to talk about your business and share it with you know okay. others on facebook mm -hmm. and asking them you know redoing the rewards for for sharing you know your when they bought from you you might be you know you maybe it's like the the, the throw in the the bonus value might be We'll reward you with not only for your with this higher ticket item purchase, but if you make this high ticket purchase today and you refer me to five of your friends or five other businesses that may also you know do this, then I will you know I'll be able to reward you with this complimentary hotel stay. So you're creating you're making them earn it by doing over and above one the purchase, pay in full or some for example or or and refer me so that you can generate referrals or do you know if you'll do the you know a a, a, a review or several reviews you know i really need your help here to spread the word i'm gonna we're gonna make it easy i'm gonna send you some links so you're asking them to post your written review on on uh, by the way one thing i didn't mention about that survey process what we do is we throttle this is another tip anybody can use we throttled those surveys when we when they told us they were a four and five, they were thrilled with our product. We'd be sending them, uh, throttling them with asking the, some of them to give us a written review on our on our Google page, others to Site Jabber, others to Trustpilot, others to uh, Shopper Approved. You know, we we wanted to we want to spread the the reviews out on different third-party review sites so that Google is picking them up, all of them up and loading them up on our when, on our site. When somebody, when somebody searches our brand, they're finding all of these reviews on different third-party websites. And uh, so that's a huge tip is, as far as just throttling them. The next week, I'm gonna send everybody the review link to post it in a, write, a written review on Google. And the next 10, you know, and mind you, if they gave you a one, two or three score, you need to know that too. Because that's when, okay, you're not going to send them a request for a review, obviously, but you're going to jump all over that and you're going to try to fix the problem. Yeah. And, okay. and, and mind you, you can, here's another tip. You can use the marketing boost incentives to help solve a customer service problem. Somebody re replied back to you with a one and they're venting with you now. By, and that's another good, another reason why you want to do these surveys 
if they're not happy, you first you want to know, and two, you want to give them an outlet to vent with you so they're not going directly to the internet to post negative reviews. If they have at least the opportunity to, to they, someone is listening to them, then they're likely not going to go complain elsewhere. They're, you at least took the time to ask mm -hmm. and you're, they're, they're venting with you. And now you're going to jump, someone from your customer service team is going to follow up and you're going to try to fix the problem. And now you can use a, a, a marketing boost incentive even to help solve customer service issues. You have somebody you realize they're, hey, you shipped me the wrong product. It was broken when it arrived. You, blah, 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 blah. And I'm, you know, you guys are terrible. Well, now you can be like, wow, we want to fix this. We're really, really sorry. We're going to get the right product out in the mail tomorrow morning. And, and we're going to, you don't even have to ship the other one back or whatever, whatever it is you're going to do to fix the problem. And then you're going to say, you know, just for your aggravation, we want to give you a complimentary hotel stay three nights in Las Vegas on us as part of our apology. Uh, airfare, of course, not included, uh, food and beverage or or the government taxes, but I'll, we're going to comp your hotel stay as, as just, it's just an apology. And of course, we're also going to fix this problem. Uh, how does that sound, Mr. Customer? Will you take down that negative review if I send you that complimentary hotel stay? So you can even get people to take down a negative review when you use our incentives as a, as a, a customer service solving problem. And uh, you can get negative reviews removed. Of course, you need to fix the problem. And then you can even go back and say, now that we fixed the problem, now that we got you the right product ship, now that you're happy it is working and we gave you a complimentary hotel stay, how would you rate us now? And now they're like an evangelist for your brand. You guys rock. <laughs> and then you might say, well, can I ask you to post a positive review now? And they're like, you bet I will. And so, Bam, you can turn people from, from negative to long-term clients and to evangelists for your brand when when using these properly. Mm -hmm, our, yeah. service, our service is so affordable that really, even if you only sprinkle in these incentives occasionally throughout the year, you're going to win. It's a it's a win, win, win. It's a win for you, the marketing booth members, a win for the resorts. We're filling what would otherwise be unsold rooms, and we're filling... Uh, and we're helping people travel at, 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 at huge discounts, which is the other reason I, I enjoy this. I've had I have so many reviews from clients that have used Redeem Vacations and they're and they're saying, you know, we never would have been able to take this trip if it wasn't for the client, you know, the, the, the business owner who gave us this trip. And so you're you're we're all helping people travel more affordably. And for a lot of people, that makes a huge difference in their lives. They can. They can make it out of San Antonio, like my family is still there. <laughs> <laughs> and they can go somewhere. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so, so you actually kind of started to touch on this, but um, you know, just the affordability factor, because you know, you did mention some of the pricing earlier on, but what what is the real cost for, for an entrepreneur who's using an incentive program like this? It's only $37 a month. And so it's super cheap. Uh, actually, here's what we do recommend. We have an annual membership as well. So if you step up and pay our annual membership, pay 12 months in advance, and we do offer that at discounted, by the way. So it's only $347 for the annual plan. Uh, we, we, we make it, and we give you the 13th month free. So uh, <laughs> being that, you know, I'm practicing some of my own stuff here. And uh, so 30, uh, it's $347 for the year, and it also includes another bonus add value, two of them. We give you what we call the birthday connector, the birthday connector is a safe a Facebook software we provide, which will automatically, uh, as on, on automation, allow you to never forget anybody's birthday on, from all your Facebook contacts again. It's going to send them a message on their birthday, day before their birthday, day after their birthday, if you want, and it's gonna it's gonna send everybody a, a birthday wish automatically and help you get re-engaged with every contact in your Facebook group, including possibly sending them a marketing boost incentive if you want to help, um, uh, you know, start that conversation and, and use the marketing boost incentives. So that's one of the bonuses. You get the birthday connector and you get our fast cash four week boot camp course, which um, is a, a eight hours of deep of previous recorded webinars and, 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 uh, video trainings from Marketing Boost members who have cracked the code and they're showing exactly how they did it. So the course goes through, you know, details of ideas and usage models and and on how to use these incentives to scale and grow your business. 
So that's included with the annual membership, the eight-week boot camp course, I mean the four-week uh, fast cash boot camp course and the birthday connector software plus the 13th month free. So I recommend do that and give yourself, first thing you ought to do if you do join Marketing Boost is give yourself a trip. I keep saying Cancun a lot. Why? Because we recently brought on some amazing resorts in Mexico, in Cancun, Puerto Vallarta, Cabo San Lucas. They are some amazing four and five star resorts. One of them in Cancun is a triple A rated four diamond resort. It's a family resort. It's called the Fives Oceanfront Resort, 15 bars and restaurants. And uh, uh, with this promotion, you're you're paying, uh, you're getting about a $1,500 value hotel stay for uh, the government taxes for that is $30, $180 for the five night stay. And then there's a resort fee in that case. If there's a resort fee at these different resorts, that's also typically due directly to the resort, just like it would if you booked it on Expedia. Mm -hmm. So in this case, the tire, the with the taxes and fees plus the resort fee, it comes out to about $300. And if you'd book that same five night stay on Expedia, it'd be between $12 and $1,500. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's an example of the, the how these complimentary hotel stays can save a fortune uh, mm -hmm. compared to buying them elsewhere. Great. Okay. Well, there you go. You learn something new every day, right? <laughs> yep, yep. So thank you so much, Marco. Um, we will have like all your contact information and where we can reach you online. But uh, anything else you would like to leave us with before we end our show? Uh, yeah, actually, I have one key thing that I'm going to drop in here, too. And that is one of the ways a whole bunch of listen. This is like a totally different idea that, that a lot of members out there who still might can't figure out how I would use these incentives to, to, for my business. Here's one that works for nearly anybody. And that is to help build your own personal brand and your personal authority in whatever it is you do by helping support nonprofits in your local community. We have found, we have a bunch of our members that what they'll do is they'll step up with local nonprofits or any fundraising uh, need, you know, the, High school football team needs football gear. You could come, come in and say, hey, my insurance co company is going to help uh, support this nonprofit. And I'm going to give you guys a, a half a dozen complimentary hotel stays on sponsored by my company. And you guys can raffle them off, auction them off, minimum blind bid uh, promo. And uh, you keep all the money. Uh, I'll give away the trips. Of course, airfare is not included gratuity. I mean, um, airfare is not included, food and beverage. And of course, the government taxes aren't included for the winner of the auction. But all I ask is, you know, give me a moment to to uh, give my elevator pitch to the crowd and let everybody know that I'm the expert in insurance. I'm the realtor. I'm the plumber. This is what I do. If you ever need any of those services, don't forget to look for Marco. I'm your expert in whatever. And you're helping support the local community. You're setting yourself as the authority, as the as a philanthropist, you're rubbing shoulders with other philanthropists, and you're with the one percenters, which might do what for you? Generate down the road some business. So you can go in without the being on sales mode. You know, every, most of us too often where I'm on 100% sales mode all the time, and, and, and you wonder why people are like staying away from you. So... <laughs> so you're, you're, you know, this is a way that you can, you can, uh, you know, not be on on sales mode. You lead by giving first, mm -hmm. and when you're giving the, using these incentives as a way to give first, you can uh, you can look like you know you're not desperate for business, and people will search you out. So it's just another tip and idea. The last thing I would say is stay thirsty, my friends. I get this line where a lot of people tell me I look like the guy from the Dozakis commercial. Dozakis commercial. <laughs> <laughs> so I use I don't always use incentives, but when I do. It's marketing boost. <laughs> <laughs> so stay thirsty, my friends. Stay thirsty for knowledge. Always be learning. Always be trying to find, you know, uh, keep yourself relevant. In today's world, there's just so much information out there. And you've got to keep, you've got, you've got to invest the time to keep learning stuff. Some of it might stick and some of it you might use for one of your campaigns, one of your programs. So all you need is one good idea to turn your business around. So stay thirsty, my friends. Thanks, Marco. Thank, thank you. you. And, uh, and again, thank you for taking the time to listen. And thank you for letting us disrupt your everyday. Thanks for listening to the Disrupt the Everyday podcast. For more ways to listen, connect with us on social media. To be a guest or to partner with us, check out our link tree at Disrupt the Everyday.
Join us next time for more ways to disrupt the everyday.